Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IES classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 12th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is a motivational quote, especially to boost your preparation. So quote here is, if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. So especially many a times UPC aspirants who already gave it twice or thrice their attempts, so they will be quitting and they will be searching for alternative. So if you get try, tired, so please learn to rest, not to quit. So now let us try to see first topic. So it is about NPAs. So in our today's Hindu also in editorial, there is one article regarding this NPA. So we are going to see these two topics together. So first one here is bank NPAs at six year low, still higher than comparable economics. So this article which is mainly talking about recent report, which mainly talks about GNPA, gross NPA. So here what are the dimensions that you need to know? So this article which is mainly talking about report, right? So we will understand the highlights of this report. And we need to also focus on what is this NPA concept. So this NPA is very important from your static syllabus and already many a times in your prelims of UPSC. So you got number of questions from this NPAs. So you have to focus on this NPAs. And now let us try to see this topic in detail. So this topic is important from your economy which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. And this topic is especially important from both your pre and mains. And if you are talking about context, it mainly says that according to a report, GNPA gross non-performing assets of bank, they were 6 years low and it is about 5.9 percentage in March 2022. So in March 2022, the gross NPS non-performing assets of bank, they were at 6 year low of 5.9 percentage. But if you see India, so in India, the ratio of this gross NPS, when we are comparing with other countries, it is one of the highest. So NPS in India is one of the highest. So this is one cause of concern. So according to the report, the bad loans in India will continue to drop during fiscal because of higher credit growth and transfer of legacy assets to National Asset Reconstruction Company. So what happened? So if you want to get a loan from bank, you will keep some documents, either your property documents or you will be placing your gold, etc. So they are not going to give the loan without any security. So what happened? So this report says that in India also, there will be dropping of this NPS. So how there is dropping of NPS in India? So what are the security you are placing in bank? So that security will be sell by the will be sold by this bank so that that will lead to decreasing of NPAs, non-performing assets. So if you're talking about details, according to reports, so this report which mainly came up by this Care Edge. So report by Care Edge, which mainly says that this gross non-performing assets of bank, they hit six year low. And now we have about 5.9 percentage of this gross NPAs of March 2022. So now let us try to see some key highlights. So what are the points that we are going to discuss now that you can use whenever you are writing your mains answer regarding this NPAs. So if you are talking about comparison of India with other countries, especially other large economies. So here this report says that India's NPA ratio is one of the highest. So when you are comparing India with other countries, yes, India which mainly having higher rate of this non-performing assets. If you see Russia, which is having GNP of 8.3 percentage. And if you see other countries like China, it is having just 1.8 percentage. And Indonesia 2.6 percentage. South Africa is also like 5.2 percentage. And here this report says that so most of the developed economies, they have this GNPAs which is below 3 percentage. 
And if you see the second important key highlight of this report, bad loans will continue to drop. So this report further says that bad loans will continue to drop during the current financial year. So why there is decreasing of this bad loans? Because of higher credit growth and when we are going for transfer of our legacy asset to this NARC that is National Asset Reconstruction Company. And next one here is about sector wise NPAs. So in which sector we have high NPAs? So for example, we are having highest rate of NPAs in this agriculture sector, which is a primary sector. It is about 9.4 percentage of this NPAs in this agriculture sector and industry 8.4 and in services 5.8 percentage. So what is this non-performing asset? So this NPA, it is nothing but whenever we are getting any loan from bank. Whenever, for example, let us take this individual who got the loan from this so-and-so bank. So on this loan, he need to pay the interest. But for the period of 90 days from the last three months, he is not paying a single rupee for interest. Okay, for interest or for the or for the principal amount, then that will come from this NPAs. So in this NPAs, again, we have some classification. We have substandard we have doubtful and we have lost assets so if you're talking about substandard means so here the person who took the loan he is not paying any interest or any principal which is for the period of less than 12 years or equal to two uh, so 12 months or equal to 12 months that means less than or equal to one year so within one year he is not paying any interest or any principal then that will comes under this substandard asset and this one is doubtful asset. So it is nothing but asset would be classified as doubtful if it has remained substandard category for 12 months. So for again one month, one year if it is staying at the substandard assets only then that is called as doubtful asset. And this one is loss asset. So loss asset as per RBI Reserve Bank of India. So this loss asset it is considered as uncollectible and of such a little value that its continuance as a bankable asset it is not warranted okay so this is about the types of NPAs so now let's try to understand what are the reasons of this NPAs so first of all here what happened whenever there is a booming of economy so that booming of economy so these banks they will come forward and they will try to give the lot of amounts of loans so at that time here sometimes whenever the individuals are getting the loans so they might fail or they um, may be taking off the business so because of this they can't able to pay the or repay the loan second one is relaxed lending norms so this relaxed lending norms which mainly especially for the big corporate that led to the situation where their financial status and credit rating was not analyzed properly so especially if i want to come up with any industry or manufacturing unit so i can go to the bank and i can get the loan right so whenever the banks are giving me the loan without checking the proper credit rating and as well as proper financial status then that will also lead to bankruptcy or we can talk about nbas and next one here is agriculture loans so i want to say one interesting fact regarding this agriculture loans yes here farmers they will approach the banks and they will give taking the loans okay so that loan they can use for the input cost for example seeds fertilizer for preparing of for land etc they will be using this loan but what happened after a period of time so especially during the election movements yes the people know that a loan waiver which is one of the thing that will comes under by the political parties under this freebies so because of this they will not going to pay any loan back okay so because of this also we can see there is increasing of nps in this agriculture sector and now it is 9.4 percentage and if you're talking about pandemic so pandemic and associated lockdown also led to increasing of NPAs. So these are some important things that you have to remember. And now let's try to see next topic is regarding natural forming. Natural forming akin to serve earth. So this topic I collected from this Hindustan Times. So this topic is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes into your GS paper 3. And this topic is exclusively important from your mains not from your prelims. So if there is any point which is important from prelims means I will be I will be intimating you that the so and so point is important for prelims. 
so please take a note of that point and let me know one important thing from you is yes we come across different types of agriculture like now we are mainly talking about organic agriculture and now it is we are talking about natural farming so let me know what is the difference between natural farming and as well as organic farming so please pause the video and let me know at least two or three differences between this natural farming and organic farming in the comment box so please pause the video and within next one minute you have to type what is the difference between this natural farming and as well as organic farming so this type of exercise will be very useful i hope you have wrote the answer right and now let us come back and let us see the context if you see context it mainly says that recently pm modi said that surat success is connecting 75 farmers in every panchayat with natural farming is going to become an example for the entire country so here our prime minister he mainly said that surat success surat success which is mainly connecting 75 farmers in every panchayat okay they are mainly doing some natural farming and he said that so this case study which will be going to become an example for the entire country so now let us try to understand what are the details recently our prime minister he addressed conclave on natural farming which mainly held in surat gujarat and in that address or in that conclave he opined that it there's if there is a people's movement on natural farming then that will lead to huge success so he mainly opined that so whenever there is a people's movement which is mainly happen towards this natural farming yes we can go for a huge success in the coming days and he also said about what are the some measures that can be taken by union government in promoting this natural farming so there is one scheme that is paramparagat krishi vikas yojana say scheme or paramparagat vikishi vikas yojana so in this scheme here they are mainly focusing on this natural farming so please try to pause the video and try to comment about what you know regarding this paramparagat krishi vikas scheme so here now let's come back and let us try to understand some facts that is regarding what is this zero budget natural farming so if you are talking about this zero budget natural farming it is a type of farming practice the name itself it is have a natural farming so it is a type of farming practice and it mainly promotes chemical free and uh, chemical free agriculture practices so whenever they are going for this farming they are not going to use any chemical chemicals like pesticides herbicides so they will be using the naturally obtained things so here actually this natural farming which was originally introduced by agricultural uh, agriculturist the name here is subhash palekar in mid 1990s and he said that this is a, one of the important alternative for this green revolution so in this green revolution we are having three important things first of all we are mainly using some high yield variety seeds and we are using in organic fertilizer and as well as we are also using the pesticides or herbicides okay so here in this way if you are talking about this natural farming which is one of the alternative for this green revolution we are not going to use this high yield variety seeds we are not using any or in organic fertilizer so we will be going for using of organic fertilizer and we are not going to use any pesticides or herbicides so it's entirely opposite to this organic farming uh, sorry this green revolution so here this natural farming which is mainly opposite to this green revolution and if you are talking about the current farming practices they are mainly driven by using chemicals we are using lot of chemicals and this zero budget natural farming which is mainly focusing to promote low cost inputs for example we are using this cow dung aged cow urine jaggery pulse flour and as well as other plant based extracts so these are some important things which are mainly used and this valleka has argued that the cost of external inputs such as pesticides fertilizers they were they were the leading causes of indebtedness suicides etc in the farmers so why we are seeing there's a lot of uh, suicides are mainly seen by this farmers because they are mainly bringing lot of amount of money initially for the input cost and finally that will leads to indebtedness so finally the farmers are going for the suicides 
so if we're talking about four important pillars of this natural budget uh, zero budget natural form in year is first one is jeev amruta second one is bija mitra third one is achadana and fourth one is vapasa so now let's try to understand these pillars so these pillars are very important so if you're talking about bala amrit it is nothing but the microbial coating of the seeds with the formulas of cow urine and as well as cow dung and next one is jeev amrit so it is mainly focusing on enhancement of soil microbes okay we are mainly using the mixture of cow dung urine and as well as staggery and so next one here is mulching mulching means if you see this is the crop and this crop which is mainly covered by this crop residue so that is called as mulching and next one here is vapasa so it is nothing but building of soil humus so whenever we are mainly focusing on improving of soil humus then that will lead to the soil aeration and next important thing here is we need to understand what are the advantages of this natural farming so if you are talking about this zero budget natural farming which mainly reduces initial cost of farmers so initial cost of farmers will be decreased and apart from that we are mainly using a cow dung and as well as cow urine so they will also add some value for our soil okay because they are mainly have full of nutrients okay and they are also available locally and next one here is so when we are using this type of cow dung and as well as a urine so what happened that will also leads to improvement of soil ecosystem and the bacteria of cow dung which mainly decomposes the organic material material or matter in the soil okay it is also helpful for decomposing of organic matter in the soil and also require less electricity and as well as water and even it improves the productivity of the soil and mainly decreases the disease attacks as well so these are some important advantages of this zero budget natural farming so if you are talking about what is the criticism yes we will be having criticism right so here if you are talking about nature of indian soils they do not have proper organic matter content and if you are talking about 59 percentage of soils in india they are not having proper nitrogen and 49 percentage are low in available phosphorus and also it about 48 percentage or low for or medium in the potassium so here indian soils they are having very very less amount of this organic matter so per se about 59 percentage which are mainly seen okay and we are seeing that 59 percentage of low amount of this nitrogen that is present and 49 percentage of low in availability of phosphorus and 48 percentage of low or medium in available potassium so even they are having some deficiencies in the micronutrients also for example zinc iron manganese copper molybdenum and as well as boron so here one more thing here is there is lack of access to this native cows so actually what happens so here the subhash palekar he suggests that cow dung and cow urine they should be obtained from the native breeds only but here we do not have proper way, native breeds okay so over the last five years five decades see your native breeds they were well adapted to the local climate and they are resilient to the disease as well so uh, but what happened we mainly replace them now with them okay them with this uh, exotic and as well as foreign stock and next one is external bio inputs and labors are required so for the preparing of this corn concoction that is nothing but the mixture so we use the uh, cow urine and as well as cow dung which mainly require a lentil powder and jaggery here next one here is additional cost to farmers is the labor labor intensive application of this bija myth and jiva myth and next one here is lack of independent studies so there is no proper study so because of this we can see it is not much successful okay so here what happened so what is the difference between this uh, zero budget natural farming and as well as organic farming so if you are talking about this uh, zero budget natural farming so there is no external fertilizer they are used here but in organic farming yes we need to use compost we need to use cow dung vermi compost etc and there is no tilling and no mixing it requires a natural ecosystems so it requires basic agro methods like tilling ploughing mixing etc so it is the lowest it is a low cost farming due to the local biodiversity and it's expensive because of we need some bulk manures 
so this is about this topic and i hope it is very much clear so now let us try to see next topic title says the sustainable development goals report 2022 so this article it is at most important from your mains point of view so because every time we will be discussing about the sustainable development goals there are about 17 sustainable development goals so as an UPSC aspirant, you have to buy had those 17 sustainable development goals and even you have to also remember this highlights of this report. So this article is very important from your means. So if you say context, it mainly says that recently United Nations SDG index, which mainly says that 17 SDGs, that is 17 sustainable development goals, they are in geopardy. That means you are in very slow or failure due to this climate crisis and even because of this COVID-19 pandemic. And even across the world, we are seeing there is very much high rate of increasing of conflict. So because of this climate crisis, because of this COVID-19 as well as number of conflicts across the country that led to the slowdown or failure of this 17 SDGs. So here in 2022 SDG index, here three countries they mainly toppled. Those includes Finland, Denmark and Sweden. These are three Nordic countries. And the top 10 countries are from Europe itself. And what is India's rank? That is 121. So we are talking about sustainable development goals. On screen you can see these 17 sustainable development goals. So first goal which is mainly talking about no poverty. Second one is zero hunger. Third one is health. Fourth one is quality education. Fifth one is gender equality. Sixth one is clean water okay, and sanitation. Seventh one is affordable and clean energy. Eighth one is de decent work and decent work and economic growth. Next one here is innovation infrastructure. Tenth one is, is reduced. Okay, it is about uh, reduced inequalities. And eleventh one it is about sustainable cities. And twelfth one it is about conservation. And thirteenth one climate action. 14th one life below water, 15th one here life on land, 16th one peace and justice and peace, justice and nothing but uh, institutions, okay strong institutions, peace, justice and strong institutions and last one here it is regarding partnership for goals, okay partnership for the goals. So these are the 17 sustainable development goals that you have to remember for sure at any cost. So if you see the key highlights of this report, it mainly says that there is no improvement in performance. There is no improvement in performance, especially regarding this SDG 1 that is no poverty and SDG 8 that is decent work and economic growth. They remain below the pre-pandemic levels. And this report also says that there is low progress on climate and biodiversity as well. And there is rising of greenhouse gases. So greenhouse emissions that had set to raise 14 percentage over the decade. And next one here is we are also seeing the pandemic as a threat. So pandemic itself has emerged as one of the biggest threats to this uh, several SDGs. And they mainly point out uh, pointing out at 15 million excess deaths either directly or indirectly because of this novel coronavirus by 2021. And so here, if you're talking about health emergency, economic shocks due to the world health emergency, which mainly pushed 93 million into poverty in just 2020 itself. Okay, so next one here is lowering of a global economic growth. So pandemic and the Russia and Ukraine crisis, they have already led to lowering of the global economic growth projections. So here, this mainly says that we need to go for raising of food and uh, oil prices and hampering of go, uh, good global supplies and trade and rolling of financial markets. So if we talk about what are the suggestions of this report, yes here developing countries they need to strengthen their debt management and as well as credit worthiness. And here G20 should in un univocally finance the developing countries to achieve their targets. G20 should greatly increase the lending capacity. We can talk about common but differential responsibility CBDR and next one here is G20 uh, should support increased ODA and as well as large scale philanthropy and as well as refinancing of debts and next one here is IMF and the credit rating agencies they need to redesign an assessment of debt security uh, sustainability 
so these are the five important suggestions to our main day given so if you are talking about india and sdg so india's preparedness for this sdg has worsened over the years okay india's preparedness on this sdgs which has worsened over the years in comparison with other countries and major challenges in india we have especially we are mainly facing backward in this sdg 8 which mainly talks about ensure decent work and as well as sdg 13 okay so in these two areas so there is a drop of india which is mainly seen and this one is progress which mainly made on goals uh, goals as sdg 2 that is talking about no hunger sdg 3 that is on health sdg 6 on clean water and sanitation so for talking about this report highlights it mainly says that so it is a global assessment of countries progress towards achieving the sustainable development goals and actually it is mainly published by a group i have said the name of that group and it mainly contains a group of independent experts okay at the sustainable development solutions network so if we are talking about the question which appeared in this 2016 Sustainable development goals were proposed in 1972 by a global think tank called as Club of Rome. Actually, it mainly came up not in this 1972, but very recently, especially in this Rio de Janeiro. So, first statement is incorrect. Sustainable development goals have to be achieved by 2030. Yes, only this B is correct, but not A. Okay, so, but not one. So, next topic is regarding cloud burst. So as you all know, in Amarnath, so the people who visited, that is devotees who visited this Amarnath temple, what happened? So they mainly stuck in this cloud burst and heavy rainfall. Okay, so this article is very important from your geography point of view. So if we are talking about context, mainly says that so sudden heavy localized rains in this Amarnath, that is located in this Jammu and Kashmir, caused the floods. that led to the death of at least 16 people and injuries to more than 20 others so because of this cloud burst so there is a flash floods which mainly happened so if you see the details it mainly says that what is this cloud burst cloud burst means nothing but in simple terms i can say there is extreme rainfall okay that happens within a very short period of time okay sometimes it is also accompanied by the hail and as well as thunder as well so if you are talking about this imd so imd which mainly uh, defines this uh, cloud burst as unexpected precipitation and this precipitation which mainly exceeding 100 mm or 10 cm per hour so whenever there is a rainfall of about 10 cm per hour and um, unexpected precipitation so this is one of the thing which mainly defined by this imd so where does this cloud burst occur So normally, what happen if you see there is a mountain? So whenever the warm winds are coming, so they will be rising up, and after rising up, they will be forming this cumulonimbus clouds. Okay, cumulonimbus clouds, and later on, what happen whenever these clouds become heavy, that will carry uh, actually these clouds they will be carrying by the air, and what happen that will leads to heavy rainfall, thundering, and as well as lightning. Okay, so this is about this uh, cloud burst. Here you can see moisture that is going up. So whenever it is going up, so temperature will be decreases, and condensation will be happening, and cumulonimbus cloud will be forming. And now I want to give you one main question, students. That is, discuss the phenomena of cloud burst. How is it different from the irregular uh, rainfall? So I want to give you one homework. So what are the consequences of this uh, cloud burst? let me know what are the consequences at least three to four consequences in the comment box and now let's try to see the next topic it is regarding population stabilization should not spark demographic imbalance so this is the thing which mainly said by up chief minister so if you see context it mainly says that on world's population day up chief minister he mainly said that population stabilization could should not lead to demographic imbalance and described the increase in the population of a particular group as a matter of concern here 
especially on July 11th, we celebrate this World's Population Day. So on this World's Population Day, UP Chief Minister said population stabilization should not lead to demographic imbalance. So we're talking about some facts regarding this World's Population Day. It is mainly celebrated on this July 11th annually, that is every year across the world. And they mainly focus to raise awareness on global uh, population issues. So whenever there is increasing of population, yes, automatically we will be facing some issues. So those are the things which are mainly highlighted. So if you see the theme, it mainly says that the World Population Day 2022 it was celebrated under the theme of a world of 8 billion towards a resilient future for all. Okay. So the theme here is a world of 8 billion towards a resilient future for all. So there is one more article which appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper regarding this United Nations report on population. So that is also important we are going to discuss at the last. And if you are talking about aim of this world's population day is to raise awareness. Okay, mainly focusing on to raise awareness on the issue of this population and we need to address some issues regarding this gender in uh, we need to address this issue like increasing of population. So increasing of population that will lead to number of problems like increasing of hunger, poverty, etc. So population day that is world's population day which mainly raise awareness on the issue of population as well as we are also going to address some issues urgently. So if you are talking about history of this population day. So United Nations Development Program that is UNDP which mainly started observing World's Population Day in 1989. So since 1989 onwards, we are mainly celebrating this Population Day. And it is mainly celebrated for more than three decades. And now the day which mainly seeks to spread awareness on population control measures. And here UNGA which has recognized this year or uh, this day, okay, on this uh, July 11th, we are celebrating this World's Population Day and it mainly recognized in December 1990. And they passed one resolution this UNGA. So this resolution which mainly aims to raise awareness about increasing population along with population issues like fundamental rights, equality, development, poverty and as well as environment. So why we need to focus on this population control? So if you are talking about need as per United Nations Population Fund, global population is increasing at a very rapid pace and mainly touched about 8 billion mark in 2022. So if you are comparing with 2011, it is just 7 billion and the population which is mainly increasing by 1.10% per year. So this is one of the cause of concern. So what is the significance of this day? So this world's population day which mainly seeks significant because it is mainly significant because it mainly deals with the problems of overpopulation. It is mainly focusing on raising of awareness on the impacts of overpopulation and it's also focused on the development and environment as well. So here this day which also deals with the health problems especially faced by the childbearing women that is pregnant women. And also highlights about the family planning, importance of this family planning, poverty, gender equality, human rights and as well as maternal health. And now let us try to see next topic is regarding dark matter. So this topic is important from your science and technology which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. And now let us try to see this topic in a great detail. So if you see context mainly says that many physicists strongly believe that entire visible part of the universe forms only 5 percentage of all matter in it okay so most of the physics they mainly says that whatever the thing that we are visible that is visible that we can see with our eyes so here if you're talking about universe so whatever the visible parts of universe it is just 5 percentage and remaining 95 percentage will be the dark matter or dark energy so once this was convincingly demonstrated through various indirect observations and calculations experiments, they mainly started being to set uh, being set up to hunt for these exclusive particles. Okay. So once this was 
convictionally okay convic uh, convincingly demonstrated through various indirect observations and calculations experts they started being set up to hunt these exclusive particles so here what happened once they mainly got some idea regarding this dark energy so they started doing some re uh, research and as well as some calculations experiments etc so if you see details it mainly says that dark matter which is mainly made up of non chargic they do not have any charge okay they are mainly formed because of this uh, not do not have any charge so the particles are present in this dark matter they do not have any charge so these particles they are dark okay and next one here is so they are they are one of important thing they mainly strongly and indirect evidence so there is a strong indirect evidence that dark matter and this evidence was reflected at a various platform various levels and this one here is here as of now we have most most sensitive dark matter detector that is lux zeppelin okay in us so now let's try to see the next topic is regarding comprehending public health this topic will be important from your gs paper to under health point of view so now let's try to understand the case study of uh, tamil nadu here how it is excelling in this public health so if you see the introduction which mainly says that so recently here tamil nadu chief minister he mainly addressed one important meeting and that he said that decentralized district level health management it is a very much important in this post pandemic era so in the post pandemic era we need decentralized district level management so tamil nadu is ahead of most of other states in the socio economic development and and here we talk about high priority which is mainly given to health education as well as successive governments so even during this british raj period so doctors they are mandated to report every single death or every single case of 25 or 24 notified communicable diseases and it will be helpful to detect to count and to count the specific diseases and as well as it will be also helpful for helpful for the detecting of this outbreaks as well so during the major epidemics the public health assumed extraordinary powers okay here if you're talking about so from which act they are getting extraordinary powers that is 1897 epidemic disease control act so here in independent india also we signed public health to the ministry of health and disease surveillance so which mainly fell by the way side so india which mainly became the notorious for not collecting or verifying the data on the diseases of cause of death so if we're talking about functional epidemiology epidemiology is nothing but it is a study where we are collecting the data okay so epidemiology is a foundation science of public health so your disease surveillance epidemiology is they are the two sides of the same coin so if we're talking about during this covid 19 pandemic so there is a lack of uh, functional epidemiology and that led to inadequate for what planning as well so here when you are having the data that will be helpful for functional epidemiology and even we can have some adequate time to get up with proper planning so india has good epidemiologist but they use their expertise predominantly in research and teaching okay they are not focusing on this discipline of managing public health so among the british india's presidencies so madras alone they retain the agency of the public health act so the department of this public health and preventive medicines which mainly continue since 1930 so you can see how extent this tamil nadu which is mainly giving the importance so at the time of this british india also so especially in this british india provinces or presidencies so they came up with the department of public health and preventive or preventive measures okay or preventive medicines and they continued since 1930 onwards so after the state reorganization so tamil nadu signed ter primary health care to this dphpm and the secondary health care to the department of health service and tertiary health care okay and after achieving this population stability by the planned activities the tamil nadu government they also made some important investment in this health sector education as well 
So 2017 National Health Policy which mainly recognizes the emergence of robust healthcare industry and estimated to the growth in at the double digit as well. So if we are talking about significant diseases, so how can we eliminate them? Tamil Nadu was the first to eliminate some diseases like smallpox, gunia worm, polio, measles, mortality etc. And here they also came up with this monthly information bulletin. So that is mainly appreciated globally but undervalued in, in India. So here given the wide penetration of these mobile phones, here now the state which have an easy access to revive and to revise it. And we can come up with electronic data collection and communication. Okay, so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see yesterday's questions. So first question is regarding Ashoka's policy of Dhamma. So policy of Dhamma was an attempt to solve some of the complex problems that a complex society faced. Yes, and this one here is Ashoka aimed at at promoting Buddhism through this policy of Dhamma. So through this policy of Dhamma, he did not want to promote this Buddhism. So this second statement is incorrect. So that option is one only. And next question is regarding Ratnatraya. Okay, Ratnatraya in Jainism means nothing but right livelihood. So these are the yesterday's questions. And today's questions are the first one is regarding Buddha. Second one is regarding early Vedic society. Okay, so please try to read these statements and give me your answer in the comment box. So what are the homework I said? So please try to comment in the comment box for sure. And let me know which topic you like the most and which topics are the new for you. Okay, so now let us try to see the PDF. So before that, let me make a small announcement. We in Rathor Science, we came up with this entire foundation course for this 2023-2024 and even we have number of uh, individual modules also. So please visit our website rathosisacademy.com and there you have to register with your email id and later on you can go through the courses and uh, demo videos as well. Okay, after watching the demo videos only you can go for payment for the courses. So now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu date is July 12th. And this is Delhi edition. So first article is regarding a set Abu Salim for free for free after 25 years of jail. So Supreme Court Monday held that center was bound to advise. Okay, center was bound to advise the president to remit his uh, the life sentence of this uh, person Abu Salim in 1993. He mainly involved in this Mumbai blast case. Okay, so here the 25 years period would be calculated from the detention that mainly happened since October 2005 onwards. And if you move forward here in the city page also there is nothing much and the state page also there is nothing much. And here in this page number 4 here you can see the population stabilization I discussed about this world's population day article. And if you move forward here in the states page page number 5. AP's Godavari Delta is in grip of floods. So now as you all know monsoon started and the rainy season came and here because of heavy rains especially the delta part of this Andhra Pradesh is in the grim, uh, grip of flooding. Okay so here you have to know what is this delta and how this delta is formed. So let me draw a small diagram to understand the formation of this delta. So whenever the river which is flowing in this direction so as you all know rivers they will be flowing uh, with a very high speed and they will be bringing the lot of amount of sediments. So after they are carrying sediments so those sediments will be deposited in one place right. So here if you consider this is as a sea okay or an ocean where here this uh, river which mainly comes in which mainly joins. So the place where it is joining so what happened because of this uh, sediments they are mainly deposited so we can see different streams that is mainly seen here. This part is called as a delta. And if you move forward here, you can see Dwaraka Expressway to be ready next year. Okay, actually this Dwaraka Expressway which is being developed as a country's first elevated urban expressway and will be going to come operation 2023. So what are the advantages that will reduce the air pollution Okay, and also reduces the time to travel. And this one is need system to identify illegal loan apps. So what happened recently Telangana government which mainly asked RBI to establish a market surveillance mechanism 
and this mechanism need to identify illegal loan apps okay because of this illegal loan apps the number of money which is mainly uh, mainly spent uh, okay mainly spent by the by the people okay and that led to the loss and even is if you are talking about loan apps yes they will be providing you loan within 5 minutes but after once they provide the loan so they will be doing some illegal activities like uh, some things that are mainly seen here so because of this there are large number of suicides that are mainly seen in telangana regarding this illegal loan apps and if you move on to this editorial page there is one article regarding this china and india you can refer that and there is one article regarding the recent notification of this uh, dgca to the spice jet and here this uh, non performing assets article i discussed this topic and in this opened page i discussed about this public health of tamil nadu state and in this text and context i discussed about this dark matter and there is one article regarding this uh, unfair trade practices new guidelines so here recently ccpa that is central consumer protection authority which mainly announced a five key guidelines to prevent uh, this to this unfair trade practices okay the service charge is a free col uh, free collected to pay the services to pay for the service associated with the purchase of primary product and service okay so they are mainly collected by this hospitality sectors and food and as well as beverage industries as a fee for the serving customers <coughs> Okay, and now let us move on to next topic. In this news page, you can see launch Agni Path as a pilot project, which is the thing which mainly said by opposition. So regarding this Agni Path, we had number of times our discussion. So it is the time to revise. And if you move forward here, you can see one article regarding artificial intelligence based man brain trans translation devices for army. So Indian soldiers who are mainly patrolling across this line of actual control, when they come face to face with these Chinese soldiers, that will soon able to able to understand this Mandarin and and reply instantly. So yes, actually the language which is mainly uh, spoken by this Chinese is Mandarin, and even number of universities in this uh, China will also teach. education this mandarin language yes indians they do not know this mandarin language right so because of this whenever we are having this artificial intelligence based technology especially to identify and recognize this uh, mandarin language it will it will also reply instantly with the help of a 600 grams artificial intelligence based device developed by indian startup and currently under advanced trials with the feedback from the army So this was one of the seventy-five artificial intelligence-enabled products and applications, which may be unveiled by our defence minister. Okay, so now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding PM unveils national emblem atop new parliament building. So it is about national emblem. So you have to know about this national emblem. Okay, so on which pillar we can see this national emblem will be there. and some characteristic which all the animals we can see in this national emblem so that is one of the important prelims question and if you move forward in this 12th page you can see india set to be china in population united nations report so india is set to surpass china as the world's most populous country in 2023 and with each counting more than 1.4 billion residents in this year and united nations report which mainly said that here high fertility would challenge this economic growth so recently here national family health survey which mainly said that tfr in india is decreasing to 2.1 right the world's population which mainly estimated to reach 8 billion by november 15th this year and this could grow to 8.5 billion in 2030 and 10.4 billion in this 20 uh, 2100th year Okay, so this is about the report, and you can go through that once. And in this world's page, there is nothing much important. In this business page, you can see RBI setups. RBI sets up a system to settle international trade in rupees. So these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So one request I want to make here is: so please, ah, uh, don't neglect. Okay, please don't neglect whenever I am giving any work. So try to do that work. that will be beneficial in a long run for you 
and what are the questions I am asking so please try to give the comment in the uh, comment or answer for those questions in the comment box so and one thing I want to also share here is so which article you like the most so let me know that article and you also need to give the reason why you uh, why you like that article the most in the comment box okay so by this I'm concluding I hope you enjoyed this lecture thank you so much and please subscribe to Rathor Science Academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much